Welcome back to Larry's Classroom. And today, I'm going to talk about this antenna that I purchased on eBay. I've had it laying on the shelf for a couple years now, I think. But I'm going to put it up and make some use of it. Now, this antenna was advertised on eBay as a full-wave 10-meter dipole. Now, I'm thinking that a full-wave 10-meter dipole ought to make a really nice half-wave 20-meter dipole. So I plan on installing this. I'm going to put it up in a uh, inverted V configuration. It's kind of slick. I didn't pay much. I think I paid about $27 for this a couple years ago. I see one on there for a little more money, but it says it has a ballon inside. I'm pretty sure this one does not have a ballon inside. We built it out of a couple of pipe caps, glued together a short piece of pipe. Like I said, I haven't been inside of it. It's got SO239 here, eye bolt here. A wire for each half of the dipole coming out of the sides of it. I'm guessing he probably put a little knot in that wire inside here to, uh, you know, for strain relief, and then just soldered one under the center pin of the SO239, and the other to the ground. That's what I'm assuming. Drilled a hole, added a, a little uh, eye bolt so you can hang it. And he's also tied some little knots to use for the uh, for the end pieces. Now I measured this antenna, stretched it out and measured it. From the center here to the end of each wire is about 16 feet 8 inches. If I double that, 33 feet 4 inches, convert it to a decimal, then I take my formula, you've seen this one before, 464 four divided by frequency gives you your length in feet. I modify, transpose the formula, so I got 464 four divided by length will give me the frequency. And basically, when I take the 464, I divide by 33.33, I come with a approximate resonant frequency for this particular dipole, which, like I said, I'm going to install it as an inverted V, of about 13.9 megahertz, which is just below the 20 meter band. The 20 meter band goes, amateur band in the U.S. goes from 14 megahertz to 14.350 oh megahertz. Now I'm going to feed this thing, I'm going to feed it with a piece of, a hundred foot piece of RG58. And I'm going to put this, uh, you see I've made this choke that I'm going to put just very close to the feed point end. Now why do I want a choke? I, they call them an ugly ballon also. And if you do not put the choke, what ends up happening is that the outer shield of your coax becomes part of your antenna. So now my antenna, instead of being a being a dipole is basically it's more of an antenna with with, a, with one line on one side and so basically got one element this side one element that side and the coax shield which you know is a, it can work okay sometimes but it's going to change your radiation pattern it's not going to give what I want I want to have a very uh, fairly predictable radiation pattern anyway. So I'm putting the choke up very close to the, this is my feed point of my antenna. Now I'm using RG58. I did some calculations. I looked at the losses on RG58 and I assumed up to about a 2 to 1 SWR which I should be able to get below that. I'm going to trim these ends to get this thing to resonate near the center of the amateur 20 meter band and my hope is that I can run this thing through the entire amateur 20 meter band without the use of a tuner. That's my goal. Anyway with RG58 100, 100 feet of it at 14.35 megahertz the top of the 20 meter band and then adding in a, a tenth or so for for the additional loss because of SWR up to 2 to 1 I end up with about 1.6 decibels of loss. If I use RG213, I end up with about 0.8 decibels of loss. If I go to LMR400, I end up with about a half a decibel of loss. Now, the difference between the RG58 and the LMR400 in the 20 meter band for this length and the antenna, the expected SWR that I expect to see on this antenna is really just barely over 1 dB. And that's uh, 
you know, that's not going to make the difference on having a contact or not in very few place, cases. It's, uh, that's one-sixth of an S unit, essentially. That's not a lot of difference to signal. Now, if you want to spring for a more expensive coax, feel free. I use this. It's inexpensive. I had some on hand. I'm also doing something. I purchased this particular piece of coax from Amazon for, I think I got it with shipping about $22 for the 100 feet piece of coax. And it's got BNC connectors on both ends. I can change the connectors. I have tools and soldering irons and stuff, but not everybody does. So I'm going to show you how you can get on the air without those things. I purchased a little BNC to uh, PL259 connector, and I'm going to put, I got a couple of these. I'm going to put one on each end. This one's going to go onto this SO239 at the bottom of the antenna. The other one will go on the other end of the coax and I will put it into the back of my of my transceiver. And the reason I'm doing this, you know, there's there's a possible small amount of loss in that adapter, but it isn't very much. And I'm trying to show you how if you do not have an easy way to replace the connectors how you can get on the air anyway. I mean, the, I think these adapters were about $3 a piece. So it cost me to put an adapter on each end another 6 bucks. And yeah, I'm going to lose a tenth of a dB or so because of that. But I think that I will still have good luck with this antenna. And why am I messing with this antenna? First of all, I want to show you what you can be done with a 10 meter full wave. I wish. I don't know why the guy called it that. I think it's a, ha a 20 meter half wave. And... Uh, I, I want a better 20 meter antenna anyway. I'm using a terminated delta, which isn't particularly great, so I want to get this up and see how it works on 20 meters. Anyway, I'm going to put the thing up. I will do some adjusting. I expect that after calculating this to get to the middle of the 20 meter band, I'm thinking that each half of this antenna is probably about six inches too short. I probably ought to, or too long. I ought to be about 16 foot 2, 16 foot 2. I'm going to try just folding the, the ends of the antenna back and maybe tape it up to make a new loop and a couple of wire ties and see if that works all right. I may, I may cut them, but I'm going to try the fold back method that I've never actually tried it myself. Anyway, after I've put the antenna up and played with it, I will get back to you and report on how it goes. Okay, this is the antenna scan with my antenna analyzer throughout the 20 meter band when I first hung it up. You can see that I have a minimum SWR occurs at 14.039 kilohertz, which is almost exactly where the formula 468 divided by length said it would be after I got the formula correct. And you see I have a little bit below 1.2 on the bottom of the band. And we have a little bit below 1.5 on the top of the band. We could actually use this antenna across the entire 20 meter band just like it is without doing no adjusting. But I want to adjust it make it a little bit better. So the first thing I did is I folded back two inches on each end of the antenna. And here you can see it's getting close to center right now. We're... Oh, one three and on the bottom of the band, maybe one three and a half on the top of the band, and our minimum is now about thirty-five kilohertz below the center of the twenty meter band. So the next thing I did is I folded back another three quarters inch. So I've got a total of about two and three quarters inches folded back on each end of the antenna. And you can see here that my my Minimum SWR is only 17 kilohertz below the center of the band. And I got about a 1.25 SWR at the bottom of the 20 meter band and pretty much a 1.2 or 1.25 at the top of the 20 meter band. So I decided to leave it here. And I've had good luck with the antenna. So I've completed the antenna, the eBay antenna, deployed it as a 20 meter half wave, the one they sold as a 10 meter full wave. I'm pretty happy with the results. I got it up about 25 feet at the center 
and I got an angle for a little bit over maybe a hundred degrees, a little bit over 90 degrees and I have made many contacts with it. I've talked to Ohio. I'm in Washington State by the way. Talked to Ohio, Georgia. I've talked to uh, California, Utah, Wyoming. I've talked into Central Canada. It seems to be when 20 meters is open anyway that I can pretty well talk to everybody in the continental United States that I can hear. I haven't talked to Alaska yet, but I've heard them nice and loud on there. And I did hear a Hawaii station, but that was sort of a pile up, so I didn't really have any success getting to him. But I'm happy with the results. I use it without a tuner. I can go through the entire amateur 20 meter band with no adjustments. Just turn it on, hit the button. And as I showed you, I made a mistake. This is on my formula, it's supposed to be 468, not 464. So I've corrected that here. I have uh, calculated where it came out to be resonant, or where it should be resonant. And when I did my first scan of the SWR with my antenna analyzer, I found that the minimum SWR before I did any adjustment was at 14.041. And this is, you know, this was a nice little easy to put up antenna. I threw a line up in a tree and tugged it up there, and then I got the, the ends just coming out at roughly a 100 degree angle, tied down to some stakes on the ground. And, you know, the, the ends are probably about eight feet above the ground. I got some twine added out of there. And as I told you, I was going to try the fold back method of tuning, which I did, and found it to work okay. In the past, I've always trimmed them, and I, I'm not going to say I wouldn't recommend trimming them, but I folded it back about two inches. I put a little zip tie on there and some tape, so I did a little bit of a loop, and I found that it moved the SWR up not quite where I wanted to go, so I folded it again another uh, three-quarters of an inch, so I had about two and three-quarter inch on each end, folded it over with a zip tie to make sure it was pretty solid, and then taped it up with black electrical tape. So that seemed to work out pretty good. Now some of the things I've read and heard indicate to me that <clears throat> the foldover method has less and less rate of effect. In other words, when you get your folding two, three, four feet, it doesn't have as much impact on the tuning as cutting two or three feet off. Where down when you first start, it does not that much difference between folding it over two inches and cutting it back two inches. Now this is things I've heard from others, so I haven't tested those myself. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with it. It seems like I can talk all over the country with, with uh, 20 meters pretty easily with this thing, with 100 watts, and without the use of a tuner. Now, this might also be a good, you know, we're, we're going into the, at this point here in the spring, of, well, actually, the fall of 2022, we're getting to the point of the solar cycle where bands such as 10 meters will, will pick up, and a lot of technicians out there. You have uh, some uh, phone privileges. I think it's from 28.3 to 28.5 on a 10 meter band. Uh, you could take an antenna like this. You could easily build a 40, 20, 15, 10. You can, you can modify this. And what I've done here, just for your convenience, I've calculated the length of, and this is the length based on the 468 divided by the frequency of the bottom end of each band for a 40 meter antenna you would probably start out with about 66 feet 11 inches and probably trim or fold from there to tune it where you want. The 20 meter, and 20 meter antenna would be about 33 feet and 6 inches. 15 meter antenna 22 feet 4 inches and 10 meter 16 feet 9 inches. And remember these are the total length of the antenna so each each piece is going to be half of that. And uh, These are calculated for the bottom of each band, so you could trim and tune it up where you want. This would be a really good one, I think, for a tech that wanted to get on HF. There's a lot that goes on on 10 meter side band when the band gets going. Anyway, I hope this will encourage some of you to do some some uh, antenna building and get a 10. You know, if you're a technician and you want to build this thing, make total length of 10 foot six. 16 foot 9 inches and remember these are all total lengths. We're gonna have half of that in each side of the antenna And it's basically a dipole with the ends 
hanging down. You can stretch it up with a die pole if you have an easy way to connect the ends. But if you only have one support, it works pretty good as an inverted V. And I got it 20, which is, and I've got it for 25 feet, which is slightly less, I think, than a, than a half wavelength on 20. But on 15 and 10, it's even easier to get that center up a half wavelength. It's always nice to get your antenna up half wavelength if you can. But I'm having pretty good luck with this at 25 feet, and I think I think that about uh, 34 feet or something like that would be half wavelength. Well, on on uh, 20 meters. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this thing, and I hope it encourages you to build an experiment with antennas. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe. Until the next time we, we meet on this channel, be sure to keep on learning, keep on playing with your radios, and just have a good time.